I'm Sebastian St. James. You cannot afford a house because you spend too much money on smashed avocado on toast and sipping lattes, according to the baby boomers. And your house costs as much as a packet of chips and a Mars bar, according to the millennials. In this intergenerational war, who is correct? Are millennials crybabies who waste all their money? Or were baby boomers practically given a house at birth? I'll let you know. As a Generation X person myself, I am fair and impartial and I can make a ruling on baby boomers versus millennials. And I have the data once and for all to tell you who is telling the truth in this big debate. This data is freshly out today and I've amalgamated data from various sources. This case is real and my ruling will be final. First of all, let's pigeonhole you so you know which team you should be barracking for. Baby boomers were born between 1946 and 1964. Does this apply to you? Generation X were born between 1965 and 1980. Millennials were born between 1981 and 1996. Gen Z was born between 1996 and 2012. Right, so you know which team you're on, whether you're a millennial or whether you're a baby boomer, or if not, you can decide based on the merits which team you think you should barrack for. Here is a graph showing Australia's spending on takeaway and restaurants and cafes as a percentage of GDP. As you can see, the graph is going massively up. Back in 1985, hardly any of our money was actually spent on restaurants and takeaways. And I remember that as a child. We basically didn't spend hardly any at all on those areas. And right up to the right, where you're noticing now there is a massive increase. Goodness me, what a big jump. When comparable records began in 1983, spending on takeaway restaurants and cafes came to 0.68% of GDP. Around halfway through our data set in 2002, that figure had more than doubled to 1.4% of GDP. Finally, in a lockdown impacted 2021 to 2022, it had risen more than three times its original size as a proportion of overall economy to sit at 2.33% of GDP. Point number one goes to the baby boomers, because you're correct. When you were younger, when you were buying your first house, you were not spending near as much money on cafes, restaurants and that type of culture as the millennials are today. But I have some extra data to help us decide. Millennials spend about $174 per month dining out in restaurants on average. Non-millennials spend about $153 per month dining out in restaurants. So, millennials 174, non-millennials 153. I'll be the judge on who is wasting their money more. Millennials, it's not looking good for you. According to the research, 87% of millennials say they're willing to splurge on a nice meal out, even if money is in short supply. Living paycheck to paycheck, using buy now, pay later, but if their friend invites them out to a restaurant, sure, I'll be right there. Millennials say they're looking for a restaurant that is convenient, yet healthy, fun and exciting, yet natural and unprocessed, and high quality yet affordable. Good luck. You don't want much. 55% of millennials say they prefer communal tables at restaurants. Unless you're specifically there with a group, I can't think of anything worse. 68% of millennials ask friends before selecting a restaurant. And 68% of millennials say celebrity endorsements have no effect on their choices. 40% of millennials say they like to order different things every time they eat in the same restaurant. This data comes directly from the restaurant's peak research body. What else do they have to say? While only 30% of millennials make sure to eat food that is certified organic, a whopping 80% of them want to know more about where their food is grown. When you go to a restaurant, you ask the waiter, excuse me, uh, where is this beef grown? I only eat Gippsland beef. No, I can't imagine that happening. 41.29% admit that they shelled out more on lattes, cappuccinos and other coffee drinks in the past year than they invested in their retirement plans. According to the data collected from the responses of 1,900 millennials ages 18 to 35. There we go. You've done the survey. You've answered the question and you've dubbed yourself in. The survey also revealed that 52.64% of millennials' respondents described their level of investing savviness as low, and only 9.33% of them as high. Watch my YouTube channel, your level of savviness will be high in no time. Coming out soon, I have a video which will explain exactly how to cope with rising inflation. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Since baby boomers were in the house, or at least buying their first house, the economy has changed a lot. I shall explain how. 
In 1990, value-added manufacturing represented roughly $1 in every $7 generated by the nation's economy in terms of GDP. That's 13.8%. That level of self-sufficiency in manufacturing output is now a distant memory. So this is data from Australia specifically. As of the latest comparable data from the World Bank, manufacturing now represents only 5.65%, that's down from 13.8, of GDP or roughly $1 in every 18 generated by the nation's economy. Self-sufficiency in manufacturing in Australia is a distant memory. And here's a graph to prove that. The value added manufacturing in Australia in 1990 was wow, super high, look at that, and has been steadily going down and down and down. Where once Australia could be considered at least within the same ballpark as the United States or Great Britain, some of our immediate rivals in terms of manufacturing as a percentage of GDP are now nations like Botswana and Eritrea. So how the mighty has fallen in Australia as far as manufacturing is concerned. But what do we do? What does Australia do instead? Well, we are involved in exporting minerals and in the services sector. We've pivoted. And that's what we do now. Exports in Australia are not evenly spread across the nation because mines are only in specific states and only in specific areas. Within those states, that has affected demand on housing and other resources. Look. Here is a map of Australia showing the demand for iron ore, coal and gas. In the rest of Australia, wage growth is 3.6%. In Queensland, it's 3.8% because of the increase in mining. And in Western Australia, it's 4.4%. Housing demand is going up by 4.4%. But in Western Australia, it's going up by 7.8%. So the mining boom is having an effect on specific areas. Interesting, how is Australia's economy expected to grow in the future? Here is a graph showing the real gross domestic product growth rate from 2017 to 2027. How do I know what 2027 will be? Well, they're estimates. This shows the economy going along quite nicely and then minus 2.18% in 2020. Up of excellent recovery in 2021. And estimate in 2022, because of course it's not over, was 4.16%. And then steady growth onwards into the future. And that's your future according to the predictions of the IMF. Good, but what is the Australian government likely to spend its money on going forward? Here is a chart that shows the Australian government expenditure by function. In orange, we can see a lot of money being put into COVID-19, which is basically all disappearing now, so the economy will do better in that regard. Health was 80.2 and it's going to go up to 97.5% there in the dark blue. That's a massive increase as the baby boomers are getting older and they need more of the economy's money. Likewise, defence, which is in the strong blue, was 30.8 and now is going up to 39. So who is right, baby boomers or millennials? Baby boomers' claim is that millennials waste their money on restaurants, cafes, eating out. Is this correct? We've seen the graph on Australia spending on takeaways, restaurants and cafes and boy has it gone up. Millennials spend $174 going out, non-millennials $153. My ruling is, baby boomers are correct. Millennials are wasting too much money on smashed avocado on toast and lattes. My ruling is final. Now to judge the millennials claim that houses in the past cost baby boomers virtually nothing. Here is a graph of house prices versus income. We see in the dark red that the income has been slowly growing over time, but in the orange, the price of houses has skyrocketed. Wow. House prices as it relates to earnings are now many, many times higher than they were when baby boomers were first buying their house. My ruling is, millennials, you are correct. Baby boomers, your houses were cheap. Don't pretend otherwise. So stop arguing, millennials and baby boomers. It turns out you are both correct. Do you know there are people who are deliberately conspiring to make your wage lower? I've done a video on that. Go ahead and click on it here.